Hi guys, my name is Tiffany and welcome back to another video. So in this one, I thought I would share with you guys the differences between getting your associate's degree in nursing or your bachelor's of science degree in nursing. So I've been getting a lot of DMs from you guys and a lot of comments asking the differences between getting your associate's degree in nursing, so your ADN, versus getting your bachelor's of science degree in nursing, which is your BSN. And people are having misconceptions between the two, so I thought I would just clarify some information. So first of all, they are both different types of degrees you can get. Your associate's is typically a two-year program, and your bachelor's of science degree in nursing is typically a four-year program. It can be longer. There are some programs that may take a little bit longer where you may be put on a waiting list and the competition is high and so it may be harder for you to get some of your classes. So there are some programs out there that may be a little bit longer. So typically BSN is usually four years to about six years, just depending on the school that you go to. There are some out there that may also have accelerated programs if you are having your second degree. So if you already graduated with a different degree and you want to go back to school and get your um, degree into nursing, a lot of people will go into accelerated programs, which you can also apply for. But I'm only speaking on behalf of the BSN, which is what I have. I went to a four year program and that allowed me to have my BSN when I graduated. And people are having some misconceptions between the associates versus the bachelors. And you are still a nurse, a registered nurse in both cases. You take the NCLEX. And so the only difference is the program that you go into and the degree that you receive afterwards. And people are asking whether or not you should go for the associates or the BSN. And honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys that the competition is extremely high nowadays, that the BSN has become a new normal for a lot of cases, especially in the Bay Area and in California. I'm speaking on behalf of the Bay Area. I don't think there's any hospitals out there anymore that hire new grads with their associates. So it's just something that you have to consider. And nowadays, when they're looking into applicants, they typically will go for someone that is more competitive. And if you have your BSN, then that's usually a requirement. And you're going to see when you look through applications that a lot of them require you to have your BSN. Um, some of them may say that it isn't required or that um, it's not necessary. But honestly, the competition is so hard nowadays that if they had to choose between someone getting their associates versus if it's someone getting their bachelor's, they will typically go for the person that has their bachelor's. And so it's just something to consider because I did work at a hospital where they had hired nurses with their associate's degree um, many years ago before I started. And so a lot of those nurses now are having to rush to go back to school. And a lot of them are like 30s into their 50s with kids. And so being in hospital, I've worked at a hospital that was magnet and the hospital I'm currently in now is magnet. So having a magnet status basically means that it is a teaching hospital and typically you may do research. And so in order to maintain the magnet status, usually they'll have their staff fit the requirements that they need and that being your BSN. So when I was working at my previous workplace, a lot of the associate's degree nurses had to go back to school and get their BSN and they were rushing and the requirement that they had was to get their BSN by 2022. So just something to consider. And if you do get your associates now, then you will possibly for sure definitely have to go back to school. So I just think you should just go straight into getting the BSN instead of, you know, trying to do curveballs around it. But every circumstance is different. Everyone's situation is different. Every state is different too, and the location you're at. So I'm only speaking on behalf of California and my own personal experience. But that is the differences between the two. So I've get, been getting a lot of comments about that and some misunderstandings between the two. Um, honestly, I was talking to one of the nurses that is a part of the hiring program at my hospital currently. And she said that when she was hiring new grads or deciding to choose between applicants, she said that the higher the competition they were, the more likely they were going to be get, getting an interview. So she even said that last year before COVID happened and they were hiring nurses for their new grad program, a lot of them, she said about, 85 to 90 percent of them had their masters already so that is the competition and is extremely crazy and that makes me so nervous and honestly i am so glad i am not a new grad nowadays because the competition is so high um it's so difficult to be able to get a job and 
that's just the reality of it right now. But yeah, with masters, I'm also afraid that maybe one day in my career, they're going to have masters be the new normal. And who knows, maybe I may possibly have to go back to school and get my masters. So it's something I have also been considering in the back of my mind as well. But it's something I want to share with you guys that reality of getting jobs right now is extremely difficult. And the higher the competition you are, the better. She even told me that there was a year where she hired a few that had their PhDs already as well. So that is seriously the competition nowadays. It is insanely crazy. So I thought I would also share this um, to go along with the whole master's degree. And I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about um, wanting to pursue neo neonatal nurse practitioner. So I thought I would just briefly clarify this for you guys. In order to become a neonatal nurse practitioner, you need to have your BSN first, and then you need to have two years of bedside experience. Um, if you want to become an NNP, you need two years of bedside in the NICU. So it can't be in any other unit, it has to be in the NICU. And then you can go back and become a nurse practitioner, a neonatal nurse practitioner. So that program typically is two years to three years, depending on how accelerated the program is and what kind of program you wanna get into. And during that time, you'll have didactics where you'll have your lectures and also you'll have clinical bedside teaching where you'll be able to work hands-on with patients as well. So that's something if you want to consider going back to school and getting your master's for. I have thought about it before and I'm still on the thought process about it to whether or not I wanted to pursue neonatal nurse practitioner or whether I wanted to go back to school to pursue a different type of master's. Um, there's many different kinds. If you are a neonatal nurse and you don't want to become a neonatal nurse practitioner, you can also become a family nurse practitioner. You can also become a peds a pediatric nurse practitioner it just depends on what kind of route and avenue you want to go to neonatal is very limited so if you did want to do family practice or if you did want to do pediatrics it gives you a broader range so that's something you have to have experience for as a nurse at bedside first before you even consider going back to school for that masters and neonatal nurse practitioner is kind of the same but kind of different at the same time because with masters there's many different broad ranges you can do like for example if i wanted to go back to school what i'm interested in is probably wanting to be a CNS or a clinical nurse specialist which I'll get my master's for and that's basically to teach and educate so that's something that I am personally interested in just because I love teaching and educating so that's something that I may consider in the future but there's also different avenues to getting your master's as well you can do it for teaching you can do it for becoming a nurse practitioner you can do it to become a nurse leader and become a nurse manager so it's really up to you and there's so many wide options so do your research on what you're interested in but i'm going off on a little tangent here but basically if you want to decide between getting your associates versus your bachelor's i personally think you should go and get your bachelor's first it's a lot easier for you to transition into working that way you don't have to worry about going back to school to get it and also it just depends on your circumstance so that's something that you need to think about and discuss with your family if you need to so i hope this video was helpful to you and that it explained the differences between getting your associates bachelors and maybe possibly in the future getting your masters so please let me know down in the comments below if you have any other questions about the differences um, and i will try to help you guys answer those questions i'll see you guys in my next video bye